For this week's wrap-up, I want to first start by discussing the discussion forums on our site. We're going to be doing a major overhaul and hopefully this will make it easier to organize your discussions and find cool discussions on the discussion forum that are relevant to the projects you're currently working on or the, the lectures you're currently viewing. I would also highly, highly recommend that you upvote posts that you think are interesting so that people will be able to search by uh, upvoted posts and find information that's relevant and that people are working through currently. So Corwin has a nice post about our site updates that are going to be upcoming, so if you want to find out more information, check it out in the discussion forum. The next thing I want to discuss are all of the awesome pirate assignments you guys have put up on the discussion forum. So we're going to go through a few of them now and talk about some of the cool features as well as some of the improvements that we could go through. So I'm going to put a few of you students on the spot and uh, highlight some of your code. Um, we're going to start off with Gweekleam, and if I butcher your, your username, I'm so sorry, uh, but I think it's Gweekleam. And um, one of the really cool things he did in uh, a lot of his classes here was he created custom initializers. Now, if you're not familiar with what custom initializers are, don't worry about it, but it will be covered in the MVC material in both week three and four. So look out for that, and you could even go back and refactor the way that uh, Gweekleam has done uh, for your own uh, classes. One thing I would suggest for Gweekleam would be to add some grouping. So we'll see a really good example in just a minute of some good groups. Because uh, right now he has all of his files, he or she has all of uh, their files uh, just kind of in this uh, directory here. And you kind of have to look through all of them. So it's not a huge deal yet. We still have a limited number of files. But when you start having hundreds of files, it's really useful to have them organized. It's useful to get into that mindset. Um, one other thing I noticed in uh, the view controller file, so etviewcontroller.m here, is um, there are a lot of really great comments in here um, as to future things that could happen or kind of what's going on. So if you're unsure about how to write comments, check out some of these projects and take a look at the comments people have written. Um, but one other thing I would mention in terms of improving this project would be this kind of super method, update uh, UI to match game state. And perhaps a helper method somewhere in here would be useful in order to factor out some of this code because this is a huge chunk of code uh, to update uh, the UI. Now, that does kind of make sense because you know our UI has quite a few things going on. But anytime you can kind of modularize code and not have super methods, it's also really useful. But that's kind of more of an art of programming thing. So let's see what um, Weekleam's uh, project looks like. So I'm going to be on iPhone Retina 4 inch screen here. And we can go ahead and we're going to run this. Let's see. When it pops up, we'll be able to see the application. And we'll be able to navigate and confirm that everything works. One really cool thing that Gleam did here was um, the button is still here, but it's just dis disabled, right? It changes to a different color. We can still see the West button. We're not hiding it dynamically. So that's a good example of kind of making this project your own and not doing it directly the same way the solutions are shown. Um, so cool. Our application works properly. Uh, we probably could refactor these labels a little bit as well in order to show everything. So let's close out of this simulator. We can press the stop button here. And let's next take a look at Lenly's project. So I'm going to first point out his nice grouping, his or her nice grouping. And Lenly does a great job of having all the models nicely contained. We see that we can open and close these groupings. And it's really helpful in order to be able to organize our code. Um, if we take a look at Lenly's .m file, we see, again, this is very similar to the solution video. Uh, so I would encourage Lindley to, to find some more custom solutions to the application, but it works, and that's the most important thing here. It, it, the code functions, and we're able to run this application without problems. Um, and it's, it's actually very, very nicely written code. You see that everything lines up nicely, especially even in this method. This is all written really nicely, so we can see all these arguments in a row here. Um, and, and we see that there aren't a ton of extraneous spaces and, and the tabbing is nicely done. And these things might seem pretty superfluous um, because you're, you're like, at the end of the day, as long as my computer program works and runs, why do I care? 
Well, as other people clone your project down, it's important to have nice stylistic elements and, and make sure your code is easily readable. So one improvement that we could make to this code is addressing the lack of comments. So if Lenly was to go back and look at his or her code in the future and try to determine what were the logic, like what did the update tile method do, they would have to sit down and read all their code again to figure out all of the logic from scratch. By adding comments, we can give ourselves hip, tips and hints as to what our code is doing. And it's kind of a self-check for ourselves to make sure we fully understand the code that we're writing. So let's take a look at how this application actually looks when we run it. So we're gonna fire up our simulator again. We get this little bit of a delay. This is the first time we run our simulator. It's a little slow. It's got to pre-compile a bunch of files for us. And we'll see that Lenly did a great job in terms of setting this up. This is, uh, you know, I think even visually a little more appealing than the one I set up, certainly. Um, these buttons look a little nicer. The uh, current coordinate system is displayed here, which is really cool. Um, and even the image looks really cool here. Um, you know, different than a background image. So nice job on that customization. Um, so we see that this you know, application works properly and, and we're able to navigate throughout our application and, and do things the way we're supposed to uh, according to the assignment. Um, so let's take a look at the next application. I'm gonna quit out of this simulator again and stop this here. And Gary G submitted a really fully functioning uh, application. So let's go ahead and run this. Um, and we'll take a look at it first this time and then we'll go back and review some of the code from, from this one. So this is Gary G's app, and we see that, um, you know, he's got all the functionality here. We see that we're actually starting on a different coordinate. So why is that occurring? Well, if we take a look at ggviewcontroller.m here, and we scroll up, we see that the current point, we're actually starting at 2, 2 instead of 0, 0. So that's an interesting twist. We're actually starting on a different spot inside of our application. Um, one thing I would comment about Gary G's code here um, is the, the use of spaces here. So refactoring this to maybe look like something like that might look a little bit cleaner as we're trying to read our code. So that would help to clean up this application. Also, comments would be really helpful in here to fi help figure out what Logic is doing. Um, but all the other classes look very nice. And again, the use of a model grouping in order to you know, kind of house some functionality together uh, is really nice as well. So great job, Gary G. Um, this application looks great. I uh, can't wait to see what you do with it in the future. So our final application we're gonna be looking at today um, is submitted by Mark S. And we're gonna go ahead and run this application here. And his application is actually a little bit different um, because we'll see in a second that it's actually in landscape mode. So we haven't gone over that yet, but way to go, Mark, on finding you know, your own way to make a different application here. And we can see that these arrows are really, really nicely designed. Um, the whole story looks absolutely awesome. Uh, you did a great job, Mark. Um, and you know we can navigate around and we're able to, to play our story here, which is really cool. Um, again, if we kind of take a look at some of the functionality inside of Mark's um, viewcontroller.m class, uh, we see that there's actually some really nice comments here about like what's going on, what is some of the logic that's occurring here, um, and, and how are things working. Um, so. Way, way to go on your comments here. These are really, really awesome to see. Uh, we see that we also have some nice grouping here, which is uh, really helpful as well. Um, so Mark, you did a really great job on this project. Um, no question about it. Um, can't wait to see what you do on the next project as well. Um, and, and to all the people that have submitted projects so far, you know, really great job, Gleam, Lenly. It's really encouraging to see you guys uh, finishing these applications. So for anyone that submitted their project and I didn't pull it down and display it, um, so sorry, you know, I had to choose a few and these were pretty cool. Highlight a few interesting things going on inside these projects. For anyone that is still struggling to get started on this project, I would encourage you to persevere, push forward, and you know, take a look at some of the solution videos if you're just stuck. It's okay to move forward. It's great to try to solve these projects yourself, but 
at least to get off the ground and get moving in the right direction. There's no shame in that at all. Um, in fact, challenging some of these things and coming up with your own solution after the fact uh, or a different solution may be helpful as well once you have an idea of kind of where this application is going. So hopefully these customizations have given you all a few ideas about where you can take it. Um, certainly the more customization and the more you make this application your own, the more you'll learn about you know, how to make objects, how to add methods, um, what's going on with all of this good stuff. Um, so I'm really excited to see everyone else's projects as you guys continue to work on them. There's one final point I wanted to mention, and that's we've changed the titling of week to section. And this was done intentionally because we want to highlight the fact that everyone should feel free to work on this course at their own pace. We're releasing content weekly, but that by no means uh, is the standard by which you should be accelerating through this material. It's going to be different based on your background credentials, what experience you have, uh, a whole host of factors, how many hours you have a day to, to, to give to this. So don't feel like you need to be keeping up with the material by, if you're in, we, in section one, you're not behind, you know, just keep plugging in through the material, hit up the discussion forums, um, and, you know, just work through it as you can. 